United States highways put horror movies to shame as accident statistics worsen. In this video, how bad are U.S. driving habits and highway dangers through statistics and the eyes of drivers? crazy or are the roads becoming more dangerous hi i'm laney law and i'm attorney andrew myers and today we have our local road expert daniel allard daniel how are you doing today great and yourself awesome thank you so much for joining us on our episode today about law and driving habits in america right thank you, you for said. having me <laughs> Dan, you must see a lot out there on the road. Why don't we just start out by asking, what's your territory and how much do you drive? Um, I've been 25 years plus driving uh, multiple continents. I got out of the Army, stayed in Germany, drove tractor trailer throughout Europe for about five years, then came back to the States. I was over the road for about four or five years here. And now I'm basically local, but I run from the northern tip of Maine down to Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. And you say, like, I'm, I'm not. What do you mean when you say like continents, different countries and whereabouts? Yes, I was uh, I got out of the service. I stayed over in Germany. I drove uh, France, Italy, Austria, all, all throughout Europe. Do you have like a specific place that has been your favorite where people drive the best or any place in particular where you think people drive worse? Uh. When I was over there, Germany was among probably the best driving locations it was. Everybody followed the, the rules of the road, the, the pride in their license. I mean, it took them a long time over there to get their license. And it was a very expensive deal for them. Most of them over there, you're not able to be licensed to drive a vehicle until you're 18. So there was a lot more respect on the road and they took more care of what they were doing. As yeah. compared to here, it's been quite different. <laughs> feral i don't know if it's germany but i know someone had mentioned to me that in some countries they have like cameras that if you're speeding instead of like a police officer it's like yeah which probably yep. also has a huge impact i imagine uh, mm -hmm. they have them speed zones they have them in uh traffic lights if you roll past the stop line on a red light you will get a picture and it comes a couple weeks later in the mail with a ticket <laughs> well, this country's going that way. I mean, we uh, we have uh, those cameras that do the same thing, not everywhere. Dan, in a minute or two, we are going to uh, take a look at some alarming statistics from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Uh, but statistics, you know, they're they're valid, but they're boring. You tell us, right. what do you see out there? Uh, the statistics tell us that America's driving habits are just degenerating beyond belief. What do you see that confirms that? Um, driving is basically a uh, second or third place in the in the vehicle now. It's uh, it's what can I do on my phone? What have I got to drink beside me? How's my my shave? How's my makeup? Uh, the conversations with everybody around you in the vehicle. It's yeah, driving is no longer the important thing when uh, the vehicle's moving down the road. Why do distractions you say that? What, are what crazy? What specific distractions have you seen? Have you seen people, you know, shaving and doing that? What what have you what's the worst thing you've seen people do? Uh worst I've seen recently is uh someone heading down towards Boston on 93 probably around the uh the Wilmington area. Uh laptop open on the steering wheel, cell phone in his hand, got his knee holding the steering wheel straight, cruising down the uh, third lane at about 70 mile an hour. Oh, good grief. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, I, I actually uh, have seen people on Route 93 reading the newspaper or reading a paperback while they're driving in that stop and go traffic. But act, how do you, I don't even know. How would you drive with a laptop? I, 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 can't, I can't get that one. What else have you seen? Uh, I've seen uh, people with, uh, with laptops that are mounted to their dash on like a swing arm that they're Cruising left hand on the steering wheel, thankfully, and right hand tapping whatever they were doing on their 
on the laptop. So it's work trucks, uh, guys in work trucks, three, four across the front, and all three of them on the cell phones. Nobody paying attention to what's going on around them. Uh, you, you see a lot of crazy things. And my, myself, I'm up a, a little bit higher, so I have a bit of a better better vantage point. They say that distraction driving, uh, and we're going to look at statistics in a minute, but the statistics will bear me out. Distracted driving is one of the top accident causers uh, on U.S. highways. Um, what kind of accidents have you seen? You must have seen some. Uh, I've, I've seen everything from someone just drive into the rear end of someone with, without even touching a brake. The traffic slowing down in front of me, myself as a, I'm a safety trainer for the company I work for. So I've been safety training drivers for about 20 years. And as soon as I see traffic slow down, I hit the four way blinkers, try to slow down, get people to notice the traffic is slowing. And I've seen cars come by me at 70 plus and just rear end the vehicle in front of them that's coming to a stop because their face was buried in their phone. Oh, good grief. Have you, have you seen people eating in the car? Oh, all, all the time. I, I I saw one woman probably three or four months ago driving by me. She was actually had a soup bowl in her hand with a spoon. A soup bowl? <laughs> it's yeah. not funny. We laugh, but yeah, I mean. I mean, it's impressive. It's, <laughs> it's definitely a skill. I mean, I don't think I could do that. It's just like a French fry here and there. You're picking it up with one hand. It's like a soup bowl. You got to hold the soup, put it on your lap. It's like in the spoon, like going oh, in and knees. out, like that's a little messy. <laughs> knees holding the steering wheel, lean back and soup bowl up here and just <laughs> shoveling as they were driving. Oh, that's crazy. I remember in the old days, you never even would think about doing something like that. You drive all over the place. Where are the worst drivers? Um, I find the most aggressive drivers actually in Connecticut. I mean, New York <laughs> is just know. extremely congested, so it's difficult to move around through there. But the average driver is, I'd say, probably Connecticut, where they're the most aggressive. Mm -hmm. That surprises me. I'm sure Laney will have something to say about Connecticut, but that surprises me. I would have thought, you know, Manhattan, New York, New Jersey. I would have thought over there, but Connecticut, really? Yeah. I yes. Feel like I yeah. It's, understand uh, Connecticut. I had a friend. I don't know if this is totally accurate, but I did have a friend tell me that the speeding laws in Connecticut are a bit more lenient. So you have people in like their fancy sports cars. Uh, I guess I don't I don't remember what it was. And this might not be accurate because this was years ago. But I remember he said that you don't get like as many points or it's not as serious. Um, but I definitely remember a lot of Connecticut getting cars flown by me and like you said manhattan you would think that manhattan because it's more congested in a higher density place that it could be more dangerous but in a place like manhattan a lot of the few times people are going you know 30 miles an hour is really quick and exciting it's like usually i feel like it's a lot more stop and go in cities versus connecticut they have these long roads these back roads and <laughs> go feral i, I don't imagine. know if it's because of uh you know going through new york uh, you know, you're, it's stop and go, stop and go, whether you mm -hmm. take the uh, bridges or, or shoot through the city, which I always try to do. Once you get out of the city, you're just so happy you're on a wide open freeway. Maybe that's why. I do not know. Um, <laughs> have you observed um, another topic we're going to get into in the statistics? Have you observed drunks? Uh, I've I've reported uh, I've reported them multiple times. You know, you at first, you're not sure if it's a tired driver or what, but when they bounce off a guardrail or two here and there, then you pretty much know that it's not a tired driver anymore. Oh my God. What do you mean they by just, that, bouncing off a guardrail? Uh, this was on uh, probably about four or five years ago, 84, three o'clock in the morning, and um, Slow car, three lane highway, and he was going from the left guardrail all the way over to the right guardrail. He'd skim it, bounce off of it, straighten back out for a little bit, and then he'd fade over again. He hit uh, all told about six different times. And I was on with the police the whole time giving him location. Wow, it's they, probably a good got, thing. Uh, you say there wasn't a lot of other traffic at that time. No, no. Luckily, it was that you know that time of the morning. It was it was somewhat empty, but this was out past Waterbury, so 
the traffic was Again. to a minimum. But when the oh. uh, police pulled him over and I stopped to give my statements, he couldn't even stand up. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. So, yeah. So it was late at night. What about drugs? Have you had made any observations uh, about drugs? Drugs, I, I can't. I mean, slow traffic. I've smelt a few cars going by me, but uh, with the way the um, the the pot laws and all that are going, uh, a lot more reluctant, you know, a lot more lenient. The the scent rises a lot more in heavy traffic, but you know that I don't notice so much with that. Wow, I wouldn't think you know when you're whizzing down the highway at 55. Of course, uh, I wouldn't think you'd be able to smell it. Dan, do you want to? Uh, uh, help us uh, go through some statistics uh, as we uh, go through this. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is the agency that's uh, charged by the federal government of uh, trying to do whatever they can to make the roads safer. And in doing so, they do surveys. And one of the surveys, uh, the most recent numbers indicate that even you know remember when uh state by state they enacted those laws uh you know hands-free laws remember that yes and when they enacted that there was tons of publicity in the newspaper radio tv everywhere you turned you know don't use your handhelds you know you may not use a phone at all if you're under 18 if you're over 18 only hands-free well despite all of that publicity and after all of that publicity 40% of the driving public admits to reading a text or emailing while driving. 52% admit to talking on a handheld cell phone while driving. 32% admit to texting or sending an email while driving. And those are the people that, you know, admit it. So <laughs> if it's 40% admitting that behavior, you know that it's probably twice that. Um, yeah. I, uh, in my um, expertise here, skipped a slide. Uh -huh. Distracted drivers, according to the numbers, are 90% more likely to crash than a driver that's paying attention. That shouldn't be surprising, but 90% is pretty high. 44% uh, of drivers in fatal accidents tested positive for some kind of drug. And I know it's a little bit controversial, but they do include uh, marijuana in that. But 44% of drivers in fatal accidents tested positive for some kind of substance. Speeding is big. Speeding is a major factor uh, in accidents. And we always hear police say that. But according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's numbers, 29% of all 2021 traffic fatalities were speeding related. These are the most recent numbers available today. 12,330 people were killed in speeding related crashes during the study period. We'll do one more and then we'll get back to our conversation. Uh, highway crashes were up 10% in 2021. The 2021 death toll on the highways in the United States was 42,939. So Dan, is that pretty much in line with your observations? Oh, I, I see it. And it's amazing that the death tolls and the accident rates are rising with all the bells and whistles that cars are coming out with now with lane departure and, you know, blind side and blind spot warnings and all that. People just, you know, the yellow lights on on their on their side mirror saying, you know, don't change lanes because of the and they ignore it. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've seen people drive down the highway like a rocket ship uh on the various mm -hmm. highways that i'm on but you must have seen worse than i see in your experience what have you seen in terms of speeding oh uh, the car racing that that seems to oh. be 84 out that way uh down in new york on the long island expressway the you know light traffic probably 10 11 o'clock at night seems to be the the popular time for doing it but uh yeah just the the, the car racing the the tuner cars you know, it's it's bad enough that people can't manage regular traffic. But when you're doing 50 and cars are whizzing in between in and out of the lanes going 85, 90 miles an hour, it's it's just a a, a, a formula for for death somewhere. That's one thing I don't see in these numbers. And we're going to do some more numbers before we're done here. But that's one thing I don't see here. And I see on the road all the time. I, you're on the interstate and there are people... In Massachusetts, more than any other state, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but 
people that just, you know, they won't stay in a lane. I mean, they're in lane three and lane two looks good. So they jump over there. Lane one looks good. So they jump over there. Then they're back in lane three. And I see that all the time. And it's just, I just hold my breath and hope that they don't hit me or a, a car in front of me. Cause if they hit a car in front of me, then that's going to splash back on me. So I don't know. You must see that kind of thing too, right? Oh yeah. The, the, the impatient driver where they, they've got to, jump left and right because the left lane's moving a little bit quicker then they jump back over to, and then you pass them again as they're stuck behind another line of vehicles you know exactly it's, yeah what are the people worst like that i usually wave at them and just put my hands up and say where are you going <laughs> yeah because there's really nothing you can do and there are drivers and you see them they'll just stay in that third lane the fast lane they'll just uh-huh. stay there and do the speed limit because they think that they can control the traffic and no you can't control the traffic if there's a madman if there's a crazy person that's just gonna go crazy get out of their way just mm-hmm. that's my theory because i want to live <laughs> yeah i've lived to the ripe old age of 29 by getting out of people's ways you know exactly yeah it's like a lot of traffic is just like i agree with you where it's just like you see someone coming up behind you and they're obviously speeding they're obviously about to ride your ass or go in and out just move over if you have lane to the right that's empty you might as well be in it like you always should be to the right most empty lane that's going with the flow that you're traveling but i definitely agree with Mm -hmm. that where it's just like you see people being crazy not only get out of the way i'm like probably going to get a noise ticket at some point because i'm like the ferocious person if someone cuts me off i'm like slamming on the horn but (laughs) oh definitely don't be the aggressive driver (laughs) Dan, tell us about some of the accidents that you've seen. Maybe the worst accident or some of the craziest accidents that you've seen. You might, you must have seen a lot. Uh, well, to go with the uh, the right lane drive, the, the the far left lane drivers. This guy entered the highway. This was probably about four weeks ago. Entered the highway. Um, we were actually uh, just outside of Portsmouth on uh, ninety five. From the on ramp went straight over to the far left lane at on-ramp speed wow. and oh he got rear-ended by a big dually pickup truck oh my gosh i pulled i pulled over gave my statements to the police um we actually have camera systems in the uh, trucks and when it happened i reached over and i hit the record button so that it would pause it's like dash cams you know and it would say and i gave the officer the information of where he could uh, ask for the video and it, it was just, you know, the guy was like, well, I needed to be in traffic and I want to be in the left lane because I don't want to have to worry about passing people. And was, he, he was doing 45 miles an hour in a 65 zone passing, you know, moving out to the far left lane. That's crazy. What that, that begs another question in my mind, in, in, you know, and I, I, I have driven a lot. Uh, but you've driven a lot more than me. Where do you find the greatest danger? Is it on the interstate? Is it in the city? Is it in those interchanges between the superhighways and the local roads? What do you find to be the most dangerous areas? Uh, usually your interstates have the, the, the largest damage accidents just because of the speed. Uh, your back roads are, are pretty normal. It's, it's the city streets, but, Funny thing is, as, as our safety training, we've always been told that the one of the most dangerous areas for anybody to be moving around is a parking lot. Really? Why Nobody pays attention in parking lots. <laughs> you know, you people are cutting slower. across the, the, the parking spots like they're a driving lane. You know, everybody wants to get in to get their, their area. That more accidents for us as far as a trucking company going into vendors at the delivered stores are in parking lots than anywhere else. Really? Parking lots? I would have thought interstates and the areas where the interstate, you know, has an exit and entrance ramp and people are flying down onto the local. I would have thought that, but that makes me think of a story my father used to to tell. My father flew a fighter plane in World War II. He flew a P-51 over Germany and he would go over Germany. They'd shoot down all the Messerschmitts and once they cleared the airspace, they would call back to the bombers to come in. So he risked his life and he saw people, you know, his friends, you know, perish. But I'll never mm-hmm. forget him driving around in the shopping centers and saying, I feel more dangerous here in the shopping center parking lot than I did flying a fighter plane over Germany. He actually said that more yep. than once. 
So yep. I guess that that bears out what you said. <laughs> but and I'm sorry for the little story. I always thought the, the worst no. places were those exit ramps where people just people just fly down those ramps. And I wonder if they're even watching when I'm at the bottom stopped at the red light of the stop sign. I see people flying up behind me and they hit the brakes at the last second. And I'm afraid that they're going to hit me. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, they haven't. Right. So you feel the parking lots are the worst. What about who are the worst? Well, for the number of accidents is what we've found. Yes, actually, for our trucking company, for our, for us as an industry, store deliveries are the most high highest rating accidents that we have. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I was in the city the other day, and um, I see people looking at their screens, and they walk right out into the street without even. I mean, they have pedestrian cross lights. Uh, and they have crosswalks, but I see people actually just walking into the street, not even looking where they're going. Have you seen that also? I, yeah, yeah. Doing deliveries down in Boston, it's uh, it's unbelievable how many zombies are just walking around. And as zombies. far as the <laughs> don't don't walk, don't you know, no pedestrian crossing, whatever. It it doesn't matter. Step off the sidewalk, and everybody's going to stop for me. That's the, seems to be the impression they have. I vibe with that a little bit. I definitely am the person in the parking lot with crosswalks. That's just like a car is coming. I just walk in. It's just like, hit me. I dare you. I'm in a crosswalk <laughs> in the middle of the road. No crosswalks. So obviously different. And obviously you shouldn't be tempting fate. I'm a little <laughs> I'm like saying I'm an aggressive driver. I'm an aggressive walker. <laughs> but no, I definitely agree with that. Where it's just like a lot of people have that overconfidence or even bicyclists too i've seen a lot of the times like oh, i'm on a bicycle let me go in between these cars and definitely no. how we grew up like look left look right and then look left again you know when crossing is very important but last week we are our, our previous podcast was on bicycle lanes do you have a problem with bicycle <laughs> lanes uh while living here in manchester i find them pretty much worthless They've taken up a traffic lane to make a bicycle lane when three quarters of the time, most of the people riding a bicycle are riding it wherever they want to and not in the lane. Like and then they, way. they demand the respect and we should give them the space and whatnot. But it seems like 90% of the bicyclists out there could care less about uh, corners, traffic lights and whatever they do how they want to. What about uh, motorcycles? Um, I'm a motorcyclist myself, so okay. I, I, I feel it's, it's probably about, uh, 70, 30, 70% 70 of decent drivers to 30% of, I don't care. I'm getting down the road and I'm having fun doing it. Doesn't matter what's around me. Mm -hmm. Another uh, favorite, another favorite topic of ours here on this podcast and people either love them or hate them, but I'm going to ask you a little bit different question rotaries roundabouts whatever people want to call them do you find them to be troublesome or do you find them to be as great as the planners seem to think they are well from spending my time in europe uh i got uh, my experience with rotaries on uh five four five six lane rotaries with uh, trucks and cars and they go perfectly smooth over there i don't know if you're familiar with the old national lampoon vacation where he was stuck in the rotary and <laughs> there kids there's the louvre and then they go around again because he couldn't get out but um over here it seems like everybody just seems to lose their mind and it's it's a battle for position <laughs> nobody knows what the yield means nobody knows to stay to the inside if you're continuing past or outside if you're exiting it's it's willy-nilly let's go for it Especially like the unmarked they, ones. I notice in like Massachusetts, there's like a couple of unmarked like rotaries where the lines just like, how many lanes are there even right now? <laughs> it's just like, let's all just go in. Like, it's fine. <laughs> well, I think the problem is, is that I think the problem is, is that people either don't know the rules or they don't care about the rules because, you know, here in New England, there's a lot of them. And, uh, you know, the rules are that you yield to the traffic that's in the rotary. But so often you see yes. people just like kind of fly into the thing and then they look and, you know, I, I, I don't know whether it's just ignorance or impatience or just, you know, people are bold. People are aggressive. There's road rage out there. And I guess I guess I don't know. They're actually building more of them in New Hampshire, which. Well, I'll just leave it at that. They're building, they're building, they're they're never, they never make them large enough for the tractor trailers either. Because you, 
you know, you've got 53 feet behind the cab that you're trying to drag around a rotary. And if you've got to go to the second or third exit, uh, by the time you get around the rotary, your tires are almost running over the center. So it's, mm -hmm. it, it would be nice to see them expand them a little bit. Down in Massachusetts, or I should say in Massachusetts, they've actually gotten rid of some of them. There was one, there was a horrible one in Methuen at the intersection of Route 110 and Route 93, and they got rid of that one. In Massachusetts, uh, the Boston Globe had a list of the 10, the 10 worst death trap rotaries in the state, and most of them are still there. One of them down by the Cape has been taken away, but they're mostly there. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, and I didn't ask you this before, have, but have you seen the new little, I don't think they call them rotaries, I think they call them roundabouts, either by that new development in Londonderry or the new development in Salem. Have you seen those? I haven't been by either one of those yet. No, sorry. Okay, because it made me think of you saying that they're not really designed for the tractor trailers because they're not. They're small. They're very small. They're pretty. You go there and the ones in Salem where the racetrack used to be, you know, they have nice stone and they planted plants there. And I'm sure some city planner is going, that looks really nice. Let's take a picture of this to the next seminar and show them what we can do. But I, I don't think they are. And I've actually, I'm not just saying all of this and I'll probably get lashed back for saying it, but I don't think that they're properly designed for the type of traffic that they're going to have. And I've heard other truck drivers actually say that. Anyhow, OK, the um, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration broke down the U.S. into urban areas and rural areas. This is all urban areas, cities. Uh, and the urban population in the last 10 years has increased almost 5%. In those same areas, fatalities have increased 67%. Pedestrian fatalities are up 75%. Bicycle fatalities are up 62%. So in the urban areas, number of accidents has really increased uh, far beyond uh, the population growth. Uh, during the 2020 COVID shutdowns, we were all supposed to stay home. Uh, active THC came up much more often than alcohol in blood tests. And the um, transportation people that keep these statistics commented that this was the first time in the history of keeping statistics that more people who were in accidents had been um, smoking marijuana than alcohol. 32% had THC in their blood and only 28% showed alcohol. Um, nearly two thirds of drivers killed or seriously injured in car accidents tested positive for alcohol, marijuana, opioids, or another drug. According to the 2020 accident numbers, there was a 5% increase in vehicle occupant fatalities over the previous year. This is, again, during the pandemic when we were all supposed to be staying home. Motorcycle fatalities increased 9% that year, and they pointed out that motorcyclists are already 20 time, 29 times more likely than closed vehicle occupants to die in a crash. And that's obviously because they're not protected by the car. They're out there in the open. Okay, this is not according to the study. This is just some of the crazy things that have happened. And this is just a tiny little glimpse. Uh, New Hampshire police, summer of 2023, clocked two different motorcyclists, one at 127 miles an hour, Another one at 140 miles an hour. In Texas, six people were killed when there was a 130 car pileup. In Utah, a 15-year-old boy was standing up through the car's sunroof when the car flipped over on the interstate and he was killed. California, 10 drivers reported a road rage driver that was smashing the side of vehicles with a metal pipe. So that's the kind of stuff that's happening out there on the highways. Mm -hmm. And again, the first nine mm -hmm. slides were all from a study, you know, nice, dry, you know, we do our studies and we, you know, uh, write these multi-volume pages that we have to go through to derive it down into slides like that. But I, that was just shocking that, um, how does a motorcycle even go 140 <laughs> miles an hour? Uh, some of them will go a lot faster. Faster wow. than 140 miles an hour? Oh, yes. No, oh, that's crazy. That is, yeah. that is that is just nuts. I don't I don't see how they could even do it. Um, 
it's interesting how a lot of the studies are 2020 and later, which, you know, it's good, obviously, that we're getting recent information. But a lot of it, too, makes me wonder how much the driving has deteriorated since COVID because you had that year where people weren't driving as much then you have all those people who turn 16 17 18 get their license and it's their first time driving the roads are empty then a year later two years later things are starting to get back to normal they've never been on the road with other people where you know i mean texting away and all of a sudden now there's three times more cars it's interesting i don't know if you've noticed anything dan with changing since the the driving changing since the pandemic or driver habits changing post COVID or anything like that. It, it, it does seem like the distracted is, is a lot more in that people just seem to be in that whole frame of mind that it's, it's my vehicle, my road, I'm going to do where I want, what I want, how I need to get there. And, you know, you come after me. <laughs> that's nuts dan are uh, you gonna mentioned that me first feeling you know yeah you mentioned that you uh, drove in europe who's worse uh, european drivers or american drivers I, I, you seem to think that uh, we americans are much ruder and awful is that true well I, I believe so because over there i don't know how it is now i mean i i have some friends that are still over there that uh say the driving has gotten worse but they work so hard for their license they, they, like I said, they cannot be licensed in Germany until they're 18. They spend uh, probably close to four months of schooling and well over 200 hours of driving before they can even go for their test. So it's, it's, a, it's a big thing for them to get their license. So there's a lot more care taken in maintaining your license. Way back, if, if a German had lost their license that I knew, uh, the thought would have never have occurred to them to actually, as they call it, drive black, which means driving, you know, without a, a license. They, they would have never thought about doing that. And over here in the States, you you know, someone gets a suspended license. They don't care. They're heading out again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's something that I see all the time uh, in the courts. People are brought in there for driving with a suspended or revoked license when you're. Well, it can just be reckless driving or often the context is drunk driving. Uh, if you have a conviction for drunk driving, especially multiple convictions for drunk driving, your license is taken away. And a lot of times they just don't care and they just keep driving. Uh, you call, I've never heard that driving black, but they're mm -hmm. driving without a license and it happens all the time. And there is jail time for doing that. People don't realize that. People come to me, uh, oh, I just was going down to the store. I, I know I had a suspended license, but I was just going down to the store. I, you know, As though just going down to the store doesn't put them out on the highway, but you um, see that quite a bit. Um, I have a theory, and um, my theory could be wrong. Um, like I was telling Ellie before the show, I have, a, I have a Psych 101 knowledge of human behavior, so don't go by anything I say. But my theory is this. Our, our society has gotten so crazy. We're just all so busy. People have multiple jobs. People have to drop off the kids at daycare. Their boss is yelling at them. They have to work overtime. At home, they have to work overtime because, you know, the kids are, you know, doing this, that, or the other, and they want help. And so... When people get in their cars, that's the only flex time they have. That's mm -hmm. the only time, as you put it, Dan, it's me time. And so they're just crazy. Uh, and they, 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 they're they late getting out of the mm -hmm. house, and they're going to be late if they don't do something getting to work. So that's why they're in a hurry. They've got to get there fast. And it's just it's flexible time where they can do anything they want. And so all that stress from all the stuff I just said comes out and, you know, I'm not going to justify that guy in California that was hitting cars with a steel <laughs> pipe, but I mean, people are crazy. And it, unfortunately, the road, go ahead. The road rage has definitely, definitely increased in the past couple of years. And you that, see it where it used to be where if someone got cut off in traffic. It would be like, oh, well, he's an idiot. Let him go. Right. Now it's no, I got to get back in front of him and cut him off. No, no. And <laughs> what turns into two people having their problem on the road involves seven cars because they've all gotten piled up in it. 
Well, there's a guy in jail now. You probably heard about this case over by the Mall of New Hampshire in Manchester where there was a road rage situation. I don't know who was first to do what to the other guy, but the one guy got out of his car and went over to the guy in the truck and shot him and killed him right outside the mall. Oh my God. Right outside yeah. the mall where, you know, most of us go all the time. And you wouldn't think of something horrible like that happening. But, you know, that's why if something happens, like somebody cuts me off, I'm, I'm the first guy you mentioned. Just let him go. Just let them go because yep. I want to. I'm, I'm 29 now and I want to live. I want to <laughs> live to see th- <laughs> because it's just there's no percentage in it, and you don't know who has a gun and is willing to use it, or a or a metal pipe, or gosh knows what. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's a big problem. The the behavioral psychologists again. I have a knowledge of psychology all the way up through Psych 101, but the behavioral psychologists, you know decades ago said that if you put too many rats in a cage, they start demonstrating aberrant behavior. And that's my theory. That's what's going on on the roads because the roads were built as cow paths back when there were horse and buggies. And now we have 90,000 million cars on the roads. And that, that, that's, a, that's a number that I looked up, by the way. <laughs> and there's just too many cars on too little space on the highway. And so people are acting out. So I don't know. Those are my theories. What are yours? <laughs> Well, we have a statement I, for that in the truck driving world. We call it uh, too many a-holes, not enough asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that. Love that. Uh, share some more. Do you have any yeah. other statements? <laughs> have any other words? I like that. Anything else? Uh, quips like that? No, no. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. <laughs> All right. I have two more questions for you. And Lainey, cover your ears because I'm going to ask Dan, who are worst drivers, men or women? <laughs> The Sad to pause. say, but uh, I, find, I find the women more aggressive <laughs> in in the lane changing. <laughs> you know, the, the I have to get in front. Doesn't matter what's going on. I, I find female drivers to be that way more. Laney, any defense? Any defense? No, I mean, like, I'm going to be completely straightforward. Like, if I see someone, like, we're talking about those people weaving in and out between cars. is like, I'm the psychopath that's, like, speeding up to make sure that they can't. <laughs> <laughs> I will stay out of your way when I leave in the parking lot outside. I okay. am ferocious. I'm five foot five. But when you see me in a two-ton vehicle, watch out. <laughs> you got to well, shut them down, huh? I'm glad that we got that straight. And I'll let you get out of the parking lot first. Okay, one more question. And now you can get back at me. I don't know. Who are worse drivers, young people or old people? Uh, young people are worse for the simple fact that they don't care. They, you know, they, they want to get their thing done, what they want to do. But it depends on how old you're going. There's, there's at a certain point, I, I'm of a firm believer that once you hit 80, it's time for some extra testing. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I, I see some people that they, they should not be behind the wheel, but they still have their license. And I, I'm a firm believer that there should be some sort of extra testing. But, you know, obviously we can't do that because that's discriminatory. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm with you there that uh, there should be some kind of testing. I don't know if it's the discriminatory part about it, but no politician is going to talk about that because, as you know, demographically, the older population is the population that can most reliably be counted on to vote. (laughs) Young people don't necessarily vote. Middle-aged people start caring as soon as they get that first property tax bill. Okay, (laughs) who's responsible for this? But senior citizens are the ones that are most reliably going to vote. And so no, I mean, the politicians are running up and down Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina right now saying, oh, I'm going to, you know, do this and we're going to stop inflation. We're going to stop the wars. Everybody's going to have a nice, perfect life. I mean, the stuff these people say is incredible, but not a one of them. I'll guarantee you not a one of them is going to say, oh, we're going to start testing old people because no, the old people are the ones that vote every time. So. Right. It's sad, but I would I would agree with you that at some point, you know, at the very minimum vision testing, I guess you do have to do a vision test now, but that's about it. Um, so, you yeah. know, it's a problem, but I don't know what they're going to do about yeah, it. Yeah, it would be nice to see even when you go to like renew your license. I mean, because like you said, it's like you, we don't want to discriminate against seniors and like you can't really 
platform on that. But even if you just went to renew your license, like if you had to do a little test, because how many people on the road even that aren't old? Like I have had friends do some atrocious driving and not know better or just see stupid things or people not understanding like the solid light line versus a dotted white line. And when the lines get like closer together, how it's an exit or things along that nature, there's people you get your license when you're 16 and then like you're 26, 36, 46, and you've forgotten a lot of the things that you learned to get that license in the first place, in my opinion. Yeah, right. yeah that's true. Dan, any closing thoughts? I think you told us there was something that happened to you just today before we came on here. What happened to you today? Oh, yeah. Coming back uh, 84, I was in uh, Western Connecticut doing some deliveries and heading back and uh, was a Ford Focus. Again, his hand in his phone, doing the in and out of traffic, weaving, come up by me. Had to hit the brakes because traffic was slowing down. He got about six car lengths back behind me again. And I had an exit that wasn't maybe 200 feet in front of me at the time. We were doing about 55. Mm -hmm. And traffic opened up again in the center lane, and he decided to punch it. There was a car in front of me, probably about 40 feet in front of me, and he didn't see that until the last second he was trying to exit. He clipped the uh, the back corner trying to squeeze between the car in front of me and myself, spun that guy out, spun yeah. himself out, and straight into the Jersey barrier on the uh, guardrail. Oh, my I God. I had all I could do to stop. The worst part is it was raining, and I was empty. As a tractor trailer that, when they're empty on a wet road, is actually more dangerous than a fully loaded tractor trailer. Because our brakes are set up to stop 80,000 pounds. But when it's empty in a wet road, it just locks the brakes up and you slide. I slid oh. probably a good 150 feet, but I managed not to hit either one of the vehicles. Oh, good God. Good for you. It takes some skill to do that. These sure. other people must have had some injuries, I would imagine. They would have to have. No? Um, I, yeah, he was uh, the, 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 the guy that got rear end clipped. He... Uh, he must have hit his head on the side pillar because he had a good gash on the side of his head. The uh, the other guy um, didn't even see anything wrong with him. But he was blaming everybody else because he had to get over for the exit. Oh, he had to get over for the exit. He never thought of just, like turning the brakes on and, and just going behind the people. Yeah, especially like you said, Pulling like behind me. Up. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's nuts. I see that all the time. You know, you're driving along and... You know, the exit's coming up and you see the exit. I mean, there was a sign a mile back, two miles back, the exit's coming. Up, and they wait until the very last minute. And then they cut right in front of you and they go over it that way. And it's just like, what about um, construction in the summertime? It's just like it's everywhere. You see construction everywhere. Does that pose a, a special danger to you guys in the tractor trailers? Uh, it's the, the the lane squeezes and the the the, the lane narrowing makes it very difficult as it stands right now on a full lane on the highway, you have about a foot, foot and a half leeway left and right of your tractor trailer. When you get into those narrow construction zones, there's not much room and people just love to sit and ride right beside you. Mm -hmm. And oh, all it takes there. is an uneven pattern on the highway and the truck rocks and turns and you end up sideswiping someone. It's completely out of your control, but I just, I never understood the mentality of why someone would want to drive beside a vehicle that large instead of get past them and be in front of them. Yeah, it's crazy. Back in the old days, we were taught also a uh, slightly different subject, but related. We were taught also don't drive in someone's blind spot. I mean, either pass the person or don't pass the person. Don't just get next <laughs> to them a little bit behind and stay there. And I see it all the time. As I'm driving, people get, and it's not a blind spot to me because I always look before I change mm -hmm. the lane, but I mean, it's just really annoying and people just, they get beside you and they just sit there and sit there and sit there. No, pass me, go. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not in that, you know, even if I am in a hurry, I'm not in that much of a hurry, you know, and the only other thing a, that really. A lot of the um, issue I see with that nowadays is the driving schools don't teach people how to drive anymore. They teach them how to pass the test. Yeah. There's, there's no more knowledge put out there to help them better themselves as a driver. It's just, let's get you to pass the test and uh, then you can figure it out after that.
And it's the same way in the trucking world also. I've heard stories about like driving instructors being like, all right, pull in here. And it's just like the McDonald's drive through. It's just like <laughs> having them like, where it's just like your, your job is to teach this person to drive, not, you know, get a snack. <laughs> I don't know what they right. teach. I really don't. I, I don't want to disparage mm -hmm. uh, driving teachers because I don't, I don't know any and I, I don't want to, you know, put them all in the same category, but the stuff you see on the highway Maybe the kids just, you know, study for the test and then they get out and, you know, do crazy, crazy things. The only other thing that really bothers me is, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a construction site, but you go from one state to the next and the highway goes from five lanes to three lanes. And there are signs for miles, right turn ends, right turn ends, right turn ends, right turn ends. And right at the very end, some person who is a, of the category that begins with an A that you mentioned before, they try to pass you on the right. And it's just, no, don't do that. You know, either pass me when you have time or pass me on the left. Why do people feel compelled to make an extra lane and pass you on the right <laughs> when the road ends? It's just, you know. So anyhow, any me closing first. thoughts? What? What's that? That's the What's me first. <laughs> yeah, it's the me first. It's like I got to get there first, and it's like I usually just let them go because you know it's just it's just it's just not it's not worth it. No, it's not worth it no. to me. All this right, Dan, thank you in. very much for <laughs> joining us today. Um, did you have any uh, closing thoughts or any other great stories for us, Dan? Uh, if anything, I could say if it was to your uh, your listeners and your, your your viewership, give us a little bit of space out there. I know we're slow. I know we're big and aggravating, but a lot of times when I pass someone, you'll see me pull well ahead of the person before I move back in. And I can't tell you how many times I've had the people get tired of me being in the passing lane when I've got 50 feet of space. Why didn't I get out of their way? But I'm giving the person I'm passing room. Also, we have sensors all around our vehicles that warn us if someone's too close to the front, some of the newer vehicles have automatic braking systems. If I cut over in front of somebody too quickly, another tractor trailer, the brakes get applied in his truck. So it's yeah. we do it for a certain reason. It'd be nice if people started doing it for us too. You know, it's just even as bad as that, if not worse, is trains. People think they can jump in front of a train and the train can stop. And no, <laughs> a, train, a train can't stop. I. We actually, I think we both drive the same uh, type of uh, 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 Toyota RAVs. It's an SUV. It's a smaller SUV. But you can stop mm -hmm. that fairly quickly. You can stop it fairly quickly. But no, you don't You don't play around with the train. Once those cross bucks go down, <clears throat> I've actually seen people <laughs> drive around them. Ah! Just, <laughs> you know, you don't do that because, no, a train cannot stop. It can, it can take a train a mile to stop. and. So same thing with yes. you goes. Okay, Dan, thank you very much for um, spending your uh, time this afternoon with us. We appreciate it. We wish you more safe travels on the highways. <laughs> thank you guys. Going to so continue much. hopefully up to this point. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And again, thank you, Dan, so much for joining us today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. You all have a great evening. You have been watching About the Law, a production of the law offices of Andrew D. Myers in Methuen in the Merrimack Valley of Massachusetts and in Derry, just outside of Manchester, New Hampshire. Remember to click the like and subscribe buttons down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it with your friends and others. If you'd like to talk to me about an injury case, a car accident, a slip and fall, a serious bodily injury case, or some other case, please feel free to contact me. I'd love to talk to you. You can contact us through my website at attorney-myers.com. We have a contact us block, or you can call on one of the telephone numbers we've given there, or you can email me at andrew at attorney Myers. Dot com. The foregoing is offered for informational purposes only. It is not intended as and does not constitute legal advice. Laws vary widely from state to state. You should rely only on the advice given to you during a personal consultation by a local attorney thoroughly familiar with state laws and the area of practice in which your concern lies. 
This podcast must be and hereby is labeled advertisement in some jurisdictions.